the microphone fell off and I was sitting down, so I don't know if I have it right. You can hear me that. Surprised and happy with the turnout, the amount of people that came on a Friday afternoon uh, to, to be here together. So this is really nice. Um, Betsy, did you put my presentation on? Oh, okay, this is mine. Okay. All right, so uh, I was originally expecting this to be in the library with a smaller crowd of people, and I wanted it to be something more of a workshop, you know, where we get a chance to interact with each other. So I'm going to do my best, um, considering that we're a lot more people, and it's not easy for us to move around here, I'm going to do my best to make it as interactive as possible. So I'm going to allow moments in which you're going to interact with the people next to you, okay? So I want to start with uh, a question, who are we? Okay, uh, it's too bright in my face to see your faces, mm -hmm. so I wanna, but I can see your hand if you raise them. So I want to know who's here. Can you raise your hand if you've attended a PD talk before? Look around, who is here? <laughs> Other people. All right, can you raise your hand if you've attended the NCTE, the National Conference of Teachers of English in January? Okay. Uh, if you're next year, you work at a university? You work somewhere else, but you work. <laughs> All right. Cool. And finally, something like Twitter. Uh, you believe everything that you read on social media, right? No. Uh... All right. So I was having you raise your hand just to get an idea of who we are, but also to kind of get the training of raising our hands going because I'm going to be doing that a lot since I want there to be some interaction and I want there to be moments where you can speak with your partner. I also need a, a quick and easy way for us to transition from talking with my partner to coming back up here. All right? So the way we'll do it is just, you know, the simple technique of the hand raise, right? So when I raise my hand and you see my hand is raised, you need to quickly stop talking, raise your hand as well and keep it up until everyone slowly kind of uh, comes back to the stage. Alright, so let, let's practice that real quick. With the person closest to you, uh, if you haven't done this already, say your name and tell them, I don't know, Victor, I mean, it's not working today. Say your name and something that you did during your, during your recent vacation, if you had vacation last week. Alright, so go ahead. Quickly. Finish with uh, 
some kind of connection with what we're talking about to our own classroom context. So we'll see if we'll be able to do that here this afternoon. I want to start with something that's not fake news, it's totally real, okay? And it's, uh, it's a story, it's actually one of the coolest stories I ever heard, but it didn't happen to me, it happened to a friend, and I didn't get permission from my friend to tell the story, but it's a really cool story, uh, and I don't think my friend will mind, so I won't use her name. This is the way it goes. One day, she was leaving her house uh, to go to work, she locked the door, she was walking from her door to her car, and suddenly, something fell from the sky and hit her on the head. And when she looked down on the ground, see what it was? It was a live, flopping, sliding, real fish. And of course, my friend was shocked and even a little disgusted. And finally, super puzzled, super confused about how that had happened. Mm -hmm. okay? So, your task with the person next to you is to answer these questions. Think of two or three possible explanations for that phenomenon of a fish hitting someone in the head. Okay. For each one, I'm going to give you a couple minutes here. For each one, what additional information do you need to know to evaluate this possibility? Okay? So if I think that this is, if this is the possibility, what other information do I need to know to figure out if this is a likely explanation? So, in other words, what questions can you form to kind of investigate this as a possible explanation? And how might you go about finding the answers to those questions? So I know I gave you a lot of info, but just to summarize, two or three possible explanations, not one, think of multiple ones, and what additional information would you need in order to say if that's a likely or unlikely explanation? Right, and if you know the story, okay. right. Go ahead.
with this. She's thinking, am I going crazy? What's going on here? And the security guard from the neighborhood is there. And he has a little, little, uh, oh, I understand what happened. <laughs> so it was a cool story. And what happened is it's, it's, not, uh, it's not so mysterious. Behind some trees on another property, Birds that are going to, to fish, I mean, catch the fish. And tilapias are not native to Costa Rica, they're actually from Africa, but they use them all over the world now for, for food. So that's how an African fish fell in someone in the head here. Right? So I told you that story for a reason, all right? It has nothing to do with the news or fake news. You didn't see that on the news, that would be a cool story to see on the news, right? But uh, what you've just done. And what we just engaged in is a form of the scientific method, right? You encounter the unknown. How did this fish hit me on the head? And you were curious about it, okay? Uh, you proposed your hypotheses, right? Possible explanations of how, why this phenomenon happened. And then you went about trying to prove or disprove that hypothesis by thinking about, okay, if this is my explanation, what other information do I need to know to confirm or, or, or disprove that? What else would have to be true? And if that other thing is not true, then I can say that's not a good explanation. And the, the final question, how could I find out? That's basically experimentation. We think about scientific experimentation like someone in a laboratory with, with beakers and things like that. But the idea of actively trying to find something out, trying to prove or disprove an idea is experimentation. Right, and what do you do? You either reject or revise your explanation, your hypothesis, or if you can't disprove it, you have to say, well, it's tentatively true. I, I accept it until new information disproves it, right? So that's the scientific method. Why am I talking about the scientific method when the title says something about fake news, right? Basically, fake news is anti-science. Okay, it's anti-curiosity. And the reason why it's so popular, it's so powerful, is because the general population is either not motivated, not interested, or unaware of how to think critically and how to analyze information that they receive, or they just don't have the time to do it. So um, fake news and misinformation and all, all of its all of its kinds is very powerful because words have power, especially printed words, right? Um,